Hello again everyone, this video is about hemocytometry, more specifically it will demonstrate the procedures about the manual blood cell counts like white blood cell count, red blood cell count, and platelet count. The materials needed to perform hemocytometry is number one of course a hemocytometer, thermopipettes, diluting fluid, and the specimen to be tested. The principle of hemocytometry or cell count is that blood should be diluted and this diluted suspension should be sampled into a measured volume. All the cells present in that volume should be counted. Let's start with the procedure. So first we have the specimen collection, either anticoagulated blood with EDTA or blood collected directly from a finger prick may be used. The second procedure is to draw blood into the thermopipette. For white blood cell counts, use the WBC thermopipette with a white bead. For RBC and platelet count, use the RBC thermopipette with the red bead. Draw a sample of whole blood specimen to exactly 0.5 mark or the 1 mark on the pipette stem. If blood is drawn just slightly above the mark, use a non-absorbent material to remove excess blood and ensure blood is exactly on the mark of the pipette. If the blood is drawn too far from the 0.5 mark or the 1 mark, the procedure should be repeated using a new pipette since excess blood causes an inaccurate dilution. Once done, wipe with a slightly dampened gauze moving from the bulb to the tip. Do not allow capillary attraction to draw fluid from the tip to the gauze. The third step is the dilution of blood. Connect the sucking tube attached to a syringe to the pipette. Draw diluent steadily into the pipette exactly to the 11 or 101 mark. There should be no bubbles during dilution. And the specimen should not be allowed to leak out into the diluting fluid. Once the 11th or 101 mark is reached, immediately cover the tip of the pipette with the thumb and carefully remove the suction device. Place the middle finger over the open tip. The diluting fluids for white blood cells should lyse the red blood cells. Red blood cell count should use diluting fluids that prevents lysis of red blood cells. And platelet count should use platelet diluents that should preserve platelets. The fourth step is to mix the diluting fluid with blood. Vigorously rotate the pipette back and forth, moving only the wrist for 30 to 45 seconds. This ensures even dispersion of cells. If a mechanical pipette shaker is available, shake pipette for approximately three minutes. After dilution, these steps should be made. Allow the dilution to sit for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, discard one fourth of the mixture in the bulb. The stem of the pipette only contains the diluting fluid and should be discarded. This is approximately three to four drops. The next step is to transfer a sample of the diluted suspension onto the counting chamber. Charge both sides of the hemocytometer by holding the pipette at a 45 degree angle and touching the tip of the cover slip edge where it meets the chamber floor. Some hemocytometers have V slashes where the solution can be placed with the pipette at approximately 30 degree angle. Slowly release the finger to allow the mixture of the bulb to flow evenly and completely under the cover slip and over the surface of the ruled area. Be sure to fill the area completely and do not overfill or underfill. As a reminder, the hemocytometer should also be clean and dry. After successfully charging the hemocytometer, place it in a moist chamber for 10 minutes before counting the cells to give them time to settle. Care should be taken not to disturb the cover slip. A moist chamber may be made by placing a piece of damp filter paper in the bottom of a petri dish. And finally, read microscopically. Place the hemocytometer on the microscope stage in a horizontal position. Count on both sides of the hemocytometer. Follow the counting rules given in the previous video. 
And that is all for the procedures in hemocytometry, the principles and the different computations and calculations revolving around hemocytometry are also very important. So please make sure to watch the video about the principles of the manual blood cell counts. Thank you for watching.